Hi, my name is Phil. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Mazatrol Tips and Tricks. In this video, we're going to go through our second demo piece. This is a doorknob or a trailer hitch ball sample piece. And it's a very simple geometry, but there's a couple of things that we need to watch for when we're machining it, and I'll get into that in the video. So, let's get started. All right, let's get started programming on this part. This is the part we're working on next. This looks similar to a doorknob with a, a sphere on the front of it, a diameter, and a chamfer. So this is another easy part to program. So the first thing we're going to do, push the left button, go to Program, go to Program File, and we're going to select a work number that is not listed up here in order to create a new program. So we're going to select work number 22. So let's go to program, work number 22, input. And it couldn't find it, and it's asking if that's a new program. If it is, push the program button. Mazatrol or EIA, again, we're always going with Mazatrol. Workpiece material, this is aluminum. Max outer diameter of workpiece is the same as the previous program. 3.25 inches. The ID is zero. We don't have a hole in the stock. The workpiece length, this part's longer at 4.5 inches long. The max spindle RPM limit. This is the G50 for the entire program. We don't want to run the chuck past 2,000 RPM. Finish allowance on X. This is going to be the finish allowance the roughing tools leave for the finishers. I'm going to select 10 thousandths, which is 10 thousandths on the diameter for X, and then 0.003 thousandths on Z, because I'm going to be roughing the tool with a 55 degree diamond, and I want to leave less stock for the 35 degree diamond to finish. Stock removal of work face, I'm going to say 0.1 or 100 thousandths. And now the next thing we're going to do is turn on the coolant. Push the three arrows, M code, coolant on. Again, that's 99% of the time we're turning on the coolant as the first operation. So now we have that excess stock on the part, we need to face it off. So we're going to go with the edge process. And then surface speed for roughing and finishing, depth of cut, Again, we push the auto button. That auto populates our feeds and speeds for aluminum based on the edge process. If we want to kick the feed rate up, we can type in a number, 0 0.012 input. So now we have 12,000 speed rate for the rough. We got to be very careful not to type in 0.120 as 120 thousandths per rev, the machine will not catch that mistake and it will crash the insert into the part. Been there, done that a couple times, so be careful with changing the feed rates. We're going to rough it with tool number four. Input, offset, always on this machine, offset number one. We're not going to have a finish tool because it's a sphere and we're going to finish that with the 35 degree diamond. So down arrow, starting point on X is the stock diameter, 3.25 input. The starting point on Z, the edge process programs to the right of zero. So we're gonna program starting from 100 thousandths of the work face. Final point on X and final point on Z are both zero. And because we have 50 thousandths depth of cut, it's going to take two passes to clean off that face. Down arrow. Now we're going to start programming the sphere and the rest of this part. So we, again, starting with our stock. And it's an open geometry. So we're going to go with out. Even though this area is closed, we're not starting right here. We're starting over here the tools can wrap it down and feed into it. Cutting point on X, again, it's going to be 3.25, our stock size. 
Cutting point on Z is zero. And then we're gonna do auto for the roughing and finish cuts. The roughing tool number, in this program, we're gonna select a 55 degree diamond, which is tool number one, and then offset one. And then we're also gonna select a 35 degree diamond for the finish tool. However, we're gonna show you a reason why this can't be done in this process, but I'll get to that in a minute. So we're gonna put it in, tool two, offset one. So now the first thing we're gonna do is we need to program a convex radius for this ball shape. And that's this one right here. It does not have a starting corner. The starting point on X, the starting point on Z are both zero. So this is the whole X, Y, zero of the program and this is where we're starting. The final point on X is gonna be this diameter, 1.8 inches and it's gonna wrap all the way around to this line, 1.8. The final point on Z is right here, but it's not specified on the print. So we need to do some trigonometry to calculate that. And I'll show you how to do that with the machine. What is the radius of the sphere we're machining? It's a diameter of 2.5 inches. Half of that is 1.25 inches radius, 1.25 and then a surface finish again of seven. We forgot to put a question mark in here. So we put a question mark because we don't know the end point. Down arrow. And then we're going to calculate the center of that radius. So push center, arc center X. It's centered on the workpiece around X zero. So X is zero. Arc center Z is the distance from the end of the part to the center line of that radius is 1.25 inches. Intersect position of start point. We already know the start point, so we can skip this field. Intersect position of final point. We have four choices up here, up, down, left, or right. So what it's asking us is from the center of this insert, where is this corner located? It's located in the up direction, but both of these points on that 1.8 inch diameter are located up from zero. But this one is located to the left of zero, and this one's located to the right. We want to select the left arrow so it calculates this furthest point for us. So left. Push the right button, go calculate, and it calculated the Z position right there. If we go to the figure check screen, it has the previous job on here. Turn off the scale, the store, and go to program, and then figure check, and that redraws the, the shape. So now let's hit store and go back to the program. And now we need to program this horizontal line here. And it has a starting corner of 100 thousandths and the diameter is 1.8 inches. So linear, 0.1, push this button and it changes the 100 thousandths chamfer into 100 thousandths radius. 1.8 inches. The final point on Z is going to be 3.25 inches from the front of the part, and it has a corner radius of 200 thousandths at the bottom of the line. 3.25 and radius 0.2 input. Surface roughness is 7. Down arrow. Right button, figure check. And now the program came across it. But we need to break the corner at the top of the part. So we're not done programming just yet. So let's go back to the program. 
We need to create another horizontal line here, 100 thousandths long. So we say linear, 0.1 for the chamfer size. This is going to be our stock diameter, 3.25 inches. And then we need to make the final point on Z, 3.25 plus the 100 thousandths plus 2 thousandths to roll the insert up over the chamfer. Otherwise, it leaves a little sharp edge on the chamfer. So 3.352. 3.352, 3.352, input. Surface finish is seven, down arrow, shape in. And then we're end with the program. Right button, figure check. And we're gonna zoom in on the top half of this part. So we're gonna say scale, move the arrows where the center of the screen would be, and then put a smaller value in here, like one. And now we're programming from, the, you can see the graphics from the center line up. And again, this geometry, we're not gonna be able to rough out the entire geometry with the 55 degree diamond because this end of the ball is steeper than 30 degrees. But let's show that right now. So let's go to left button, let's go to program, program check, and then check continue. So the first tool roughs, and roughs the part off. Here's the 55 degree diamond, roughing the nose of the part. Now it switches to tool two, which is a 35 degree diamond, and the part's done. However, right here, it leaves an area that's not cut, an uncut area. Even though the 35 degree diamond can get in there, the 55 cannot, and the finishing tool will only cut an extra 10 thousandths on X and 3 thousandths on Z of whatever the roughing tool left even though the finish tool can come down into it. So we're gonna zoom this area up, scale. 0.1, input, push shape. We're gonna center it up a little closer. Shape. All right, let's run the tool path again. Go to check continue. So right now the tools are off the screen and we gotta wait a bit until it starts roughing down the back side of the ball. All right, there's the roughing pass and there's the finish pass taken off that 10 thousandths and 3 thousandths on Z, but you see the gap that's shown here the distance from the center line of the insert's radius to the part is larger here than it is over here. And that means the tool could not come down and cut it. So in order to correct that, we're going to separate the roughing and finishing tools on a different process. So go to program, come down here, go into edit mode, arrow over to the finish tool, and we're gonna put zeros in there to delete the finish tool. And we're going to copy the bar out roughing process down on its own line. So we're gonna push the right menu button. We're gonna go process copy, two, two. That's the program we're working on. Process number three and we just copied the process down. So now we need to arrow over, delete the roughing tool, and add a finish tool. And now we're gonna rerun the part and show you the change. So program, check. We're gonna erase the tool path, and then check continue. 
And again, it's roughing the nose of the part that we can't see on the screen right now. All right, here's the 55 degree diamond taking its roughing passes. And the 35 degree diamond does have the clearance and that's what the 55 diamond could not do. So it's taken extra stock here on a finish pass. So that's how to override the machine to, to allow it to do this. But I didn't want to rough the whole part out with a 35 degree diamond. I wanted to rough it out with the 55 and then this little un, uh, uncut area was not a big chip load on the finishing tool, so that's what I wanted to do there. All right, so let's zoom this out. Scale, one, input, shape. So here's our workpiece shape. So what we need to do now is set the Z0 of our part. So let's go do that now. Tool four is already called up. So let's go over and touch the work face. All right, now we need to set our work shift. So let's bring the tool over to the face of the part. We're, we're going to take off a 100,000, so that's plenty close for what we're doing now. So left button, program, program file, arrow down to program 22, push Z offset teach, and push point 0.1 input. That calculated the work shift for this part. So now we go left button again and go to position. It's still on the previous program, and we need to call up work number 22. So go to auto, work number, 22, input. And it shows 100,000 positive on the screen. And now we can see the insert just up there. So let's zoom this out just a little bit. So one scale, 1.5, input. And now we can see the turning tool, push shape, and there's our workpiece shape. So right button. Well, let's simulate the cutting time first. So let's go to left button, go to program, go to simulation, push the right button, simulation ready, simulation start. And our speed is at 500%. So now we're gonna see the first two passes with the 80 degree diamond. And then here comes the 55 degree diamond roughing the part. Also in the corner, you can see our RPM is maxed out at 2,000 RPM for this program. Now it's switching to tool two, and now it's finishing the ball, and finishing the 1.8 inch diameter, and the chamfer, and it's done. So let's go to the layout. The machine says it's gonna take two minutes and 44 seconds to machine this part. So let's see how close that is now that we're gonna machine it for real. So we're gonna go to trace, auto, and we did call up the work shift, and we did set the Z0. So we are ready to roll. And the part is sticking out long enough from the jaws so we're not gonna hit the jaws. We need to measure that just like a different a regular lathe. All right, here we go. Now it 
switching to tool one, which is the 55 degree diamond. done. Cut time was 2 minutes and 38 seconds. And again on the layout screen it said it was 2 minutes and 44 seconds. So it's 6 seconds off its time and it on the conservative side. So you can use this to actually estimate your program. All right. Let's blow the part off. And we are done. And there's our finished workpiece. If you like what you see, subscribe to the channel and press the bell notification down at the bottom. Thanks and keep watching.